anything can become art if really you have a statement behind it. What's statement. the most beautiful piece of art that you've done? I'm going to warm it yeah, for the next it, 45 exactly. minutes, give or take. Warm is where you cut the onions. Mm. My hand, they were freezing and I was screaming. Don't paint in my house, my wife will kill you. <laughs> so you're going to pay me to do something that I love. The spot here? Yeah. Because of the spin back in the day, calligraphy or graffiti. It sounds so cool. Ton sur ton. Ton sur ton. Yeah. If you quit your job to focus on something that you love, it doesn't become a job anymore. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Inside Track with me, Luca Allam. I am super happy to welcome El Cid, the visual artist. Welcome, Alcide. How are you doing? I'm good, and you? I'm doing really well. So happy, so happy that you have you on my, on my show. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Too. How, how are things with you? Very good. Yeah, you're Very in good. Dubai now, or? Uh, yeah, in and out. You know, I've been in Dubai. Uh, I, I spent I spent uh, some years here. Yeah. And for the past few years, I'm like not living, but you know, I, this is still a kind of base, but yeah, more in Tunisia and the U.S. right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So obviously you're Tunisian. Yeah, uh, and there's obviously French, a yeah. heavy French accent. Yeah, born in uh, there. So if someone wants to ask you if you're Tunisian or if you're French, what, what would you say? I think today I wouldn't define myself by nationality. I, uh, I really believe we are with the product of, uh, of our history and history with a big H. You yeah. know, so I wouldn't be what I am and what I am here today if it was not the consequences of historical fact. So I don't want to be attached to a, yeah. a place or like... A, uh, but yeah, I I really believe I'm yeah I'm the product of history with a big H. Very you know, nice. So so, so where, where is home for you? Would you say? I always say home is uh, where you cook the uh, where you cut the onions. Okay. You know, so uh, I cut the onions in Tunisia in Paris as well. I've never heard that <laughs> phrase before, but yeah. I love it. I'm gonna yeah, use it. Yeah, I'm gonna use know, it. When you travel, I mean, you never cook. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. you you cook. I mean, you I mean. Mostly onions, you know, when you make yeah, something. Yeah, very so, true. So, uh, Are you a good cook, Elsie? Uh, yeah, I love to cook. Actually, I, I cook, yeah, all the time. That's yeah. Do you have like a signature dish? I bet you it's probably the most beautiful looking dish out there. Uh, you know, I, I cook a lot of Tunisian food. My mom, she taught me a lot. Uh, nice. But I, I like to explore stuff. Uh, I don't know now, like I've been known, people that ask me for the Tunisian shakshuka, you know, because I, I organized like a year ago uh, during Art Dubai. Yeah. Uh, like a shakshuka party in oh, the wow, studio. Okay. So we had like a shakshuka for 40 people. Wow. But uh, nice. yeah, I, I love to cook. I think it's, uh, I sometimes feel my kitchen, wherever I am, is the, an extension of my studio. Okay. You know? And the smell of onions is obviously there. Exactly. And, yeah. and you, you, you have kids, so you, you, you must cook for your kids, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do, they, do they like daddy's food? I think they, yeah, they love it. And uh, my, my daughter, she helps me a Very lot. Nice. I think she, uh, she got this, uh, this love for her. Very nice. food, yeah. Look, I'm I'm super happy that you're on on the show. Very excited okay. to have you. Um, I have to tell you, my wife is a big fan of yours. Uh, she she's she's done a lot of research. I've done okay. a lot of research into your background and, and to your story. And it's, it's a fascinating story. So hopefully, we'll get to hear some of that on on, on the show. Um, I've also noticed that there seems to be uh, some olive oil. Yeah. So this is a first on the show. <laughs> so talk to me about this. What's happening here? What have you brought me? I mean, yeah, the olive oil is. Uh it's something that I'm really linked to, you know, as a Tunisian uh, from origin. I, I um, you know, I'm a, an olive oil farmer, I would say. I have just a small farm in south of Tunisia with uh, trees that used to belong to my great grandfather. Oh, wow. So I just got into it like randomly, you know, like one season I went with my parents and my kids, you know, to pick up the olives. And then I fell in love with it. I start, uh, I just purchased a, a land that used to belong to my great grandfather. Oh wow! And I just uh, starting. So like you're gonna keep that going, for the next yeah, generation. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, your kids as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so we planted new olive trees. I became uh, like a year ago an olive oil sommelier. So I, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm a sommelier in olive oil. You know. Are you making any money from olive oil? Uh, not yet, actually. I'm, yeah. uh, for now, it was just like a, um, like a passion, you know, like yeah. a love thing Very on the nice. side, you know, because I was really focused on my art yeah. and still focused on my art. And olive oil was uh, yeah, more like a passion project, something you know, like to. Uh, to create memories with the kids and my parents mostly. Very nice. To reconnect, you know, with the land of my, uh, of yeah, my ancestors. When, when is the uh, olive season, the Zaytun season in, uh, uh, in Tunisia? Uh, it started from end of October. Now sometimes it's even earlier because of the, uh, you know, of yeah. the 
as the global warming. Weather is changing. Yeah, huh? So usually it's end of October and it goes all the way to Jan, depending on yeah. the, on what you want, if you want quantity or quality. Yeah. You know so so we've talked about onions, we've talked about olive oil. I love it. <laughs> so what is so? Do you have this in the morning? Is this like a yeah, ritual that you have? Yeah, yeah, you just so drink olive oil. Yeah, yeah, one shot. Wow, that's, that's the best thing for you. you know? I have never tried olive oil by itself. In really? the, no. So I'm gonna try it okay. now, right? So just straight up. Okay. Do I do I drink it like a like a shot style Actually, or do uh, I do I sip it? What what? No, the thing. I mean, if you want to try, I mean, yeah, you can sip it. But you know, when you taste olive oil, you have to warm it so you can. Smell the aroma, okay. so you. So I tell you, what, I'm going to warm it yeah, for the next it, 45 exactly. minutes, give or take, and then by <laughs> no, the I end think of it, just like no, like 30 seconds, like that. Right, look and at then, that. Then you smell, and then you. Oh wow! And that's it. Oh wow! This is this is this is definitely a first. Yeah. Very nice. I'm actually a big fan of olives. My 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 dad, my dad also has some olive uh, olive fields. Uh, so I picked olives. It's uh, the season in Lebanon is in uh, I think it's in November. Pretty yeah. much, give or take. Yeah. It's it's quite fun actually, like working the land and you know That's you feel thing, like yeah. yeah, it feels good. It feels it's not good. the you know it's not the, I mean working is it's more like the you know like this moment that you create yeah with the family that I, yeah, yeah, I love. Yeah. So I think for me it's a, a kind of pretext. Okay, you so know. who would have known? You, you you cook onions, you pick olives, yeah. but you're also known obviously for yeah, for what yeah. you do from an artistic yeah. point of view. So. We had a little bit of a chat before. You, you don't like to be pigeonholed necessarily. You don't like to be put in a box. So what what type of artist are you, Alcide? Uh, you know, I, I would say like I'm an artist without trying to put any limitation on myself. So I feel that today as an artist, people, they really want to see you doing only one kind of stuff. And, uh, and I felt it over the years because sometimes there's some work that I never showed. You know, like you can see, if you come to my studio, you will see stuff, it's like, is that you? And I'm like, yes, and people are surprised that I do stuff that they've never seen, you know. And uh, sometimes you're scared, you know, to uh, to show something that people don't know you for mm -hmm. because, you know, people, they want to feel comfortable. Okay, this is Elcid, this is this artist, this is this artist, you know, they can put you in a box. But me, I started, you know, like uh, back in the days in France, you know, with graffiti, that was the first thing where I really, I was serious about. And actually, I, no. Sorry, sorry, let's go back. So you started, it was, you started with graffiti? Yeah. Yeah. How, how old were you when you started? I was 16. So you were on the streets of Paris? Was it Paris at the yeah, time? Yeah, I, I remember the first wall that I did was like yeah. uh, in front of, we had a soccer field beside the house and there was this gray wall we were playing. Yeah. And then I uh, I had, I remember I went... It's a football field, not yeah. soccer. Yeah, no, football, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No no Americans here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and you're, you're a PSG fan? Yeah, PSG ah, fan. Okay, yeah. We, won't, we won't talk about yeah. that. So you started when you were 16. You started, yeah. you started as a graffiti artist yeah. in Paris. Yeah. So what made you pick up a can? I think... Graffiti back in the days, or you know, because I mean, historically it's not associated to it, but graffiti was associated with hip hop, you know, in a certain way back in the days in the late 90s in France. And uh, because I know some people who do graffiti, uh, like in the US, and they're like, actually, or I was listening to Bachata, like, you know, and they were never link hip hop music with graffiti. Yeah. Uh, and for me, it was more, it was a language, like a cultural language that was speaking to me. Yeah. I could understand it, you know, like going to a museum back in the days, I was not, yeah. I didn't have like maybe the code to read a piece. And this was like something that was uh, exceptional and kind of out of the norm. So I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. So yeah. I loved it. And uh, I remember there was a, a documentary in France called uh, Faire Kiffer les Anges. And it was about the French hip hop movement. And I remember this guy that I used to watch on the doc documentary and then I forgot that yeah. this guy was a kind of inspiration and I met him mm. maybe 20 years later in Lyon in France. His name is Don Nordin, so if you ever watch the show. I'm sure he is. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and, you know, painting with this and painting like in the street for the people, mm. you know, like where people, anybody could see your work, big scale for me was uh, was insane. And then it started like that. And, uh, and yeah, I remember my first wall I was painting, my friend were playing football. Yeah. And then this woman, like uh, she was Spanish, she came out of the balcony and screaming and saying like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, what's wrong? I was like, I'm gonna call your mom. And I was like, what, what I'm doing, you know? And yeah. like the wall is gray, this is my paint. Yeah. I'm just like beautifying the neighborhood. You yeah. know what I mean, in my way. Do you remember what it was that you drew? I what, drew what like, I, <laughs> I drew like a kind of hip hop guy, you know, with a hat like that and with a finger. Yeah. And I wrote the name of all my phone who are playing, you know, like on the field. 
Is know, it like, still there now? Have no, you been no. back? I mean, now you see it's, it was repainted. Oh, so the no. wall is still grey. Do you know how much that would have been worth if it stayed there? <laughs> wow. So the wall is still grey, but you see like the painting on top of it, which is still yeah. there. So, it's so how, how old are you now? I'm 42 today. Okay, so you've been doing this for, for quite some time. Yeah, but uh, I was not serious about it. Uh, about painting graffiti, I was really more like a b-boy break dancer. So I was really... Break dancer? Yeah. Really oh, wow. Dance. I was known for my head Mate, mate, feel, feel, yeah, uh, feel you free. You see like the spot here? Yeah. So like, this was like because of the spin back in the days. No way. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, knock yourself out. Maybe <laughs> later off camera, we'll get yeah. some, we'll get yeah, some yeah, nice yeah, bloopers. Break, LC mate. doing yeah. some break dancing. <laughs> Yeah. So, so what made you sort of get into, you know, you know, calligraphy? Because obviously yeah. that's what you've been known for, right? Yeah, that's, that's so your... late 90s, you know, I got this kind of um, identity crisis, you know, not knowing who I was. Going in Tunisia in the summer, people telling me you're, uh, you're not Tunisian. Being in French, always people saying you're not French, where are you from, you know? And uh, I, I had this kind of pressure of, uh, of needed to choose. Of either I was French or either I was Tunisian. Who was putting that pressure on you? I think it was society in general, you know, because even when you go in, on holiday during the summer, people say like, oh, do you prefer France or Tunisia? Yeah. And I remember one of my cousins, yeah, I hate people who yeah. ask that question. And, uh, <laughs> I hated it too. <laughs> Me, I did that a few, yeah, yeah. A few minutes ago. Yeah. And yeah. for example, one of my cousins, her name was Mabuka, that was, she was, uh, they asked her, she was seven years old, they asked her like, you prefer Tunis or France? Yeah. And she's like, I prefer France because there is swings, balançoire. Yeah. And... It but it's an intense like pressure, years, right? You know? It's an intense pressure yeah. to put you in a box to, to label you. And he kept. I mean, he kept. I mean, people were like really pushing you toward this, and uh, and f for me, I was like, okay, I need to choose, and uh, and and I don't know. Like, I I picked. You know, back in the day, I thought I, I had to pick. So I was like, look, my name is Fauzi. It's more like an Arab name. Uh, so maybe I'm more Tunisian. Yeah. So that's why I, I, I start learning how to read and write Arabic because I didn't know how to. Yeah, because you're in your teens, right? Yeah, when, was, you started. I, I, when I started taking Arabic class, I was 18. Wow. You know, so I started learning and then I discovered calligraphy. Is it writing calligraphy or is it drawing calligraphy? No, no, it was r not even calligraphy. It was just writing. I know, Arabic. but later on, what, what is the practice of calligraphy? Do, do you say it's written? Do you write calligraphy no, or I, do you draw calligraphy? I think I paint words. You paint words. Okay, yeah, okay. You know. So when did you start painting words effectively? Uh, I think my first calligraphy was 2004. Okay. Really, like where I, I took like the work of a calligrapher and start to, you know, do the stroke and stuff. Okay. And I couldn't find a teacher back in the days in yeah. France, and um, and I just started taking the classical work and yeah. you know like and playing with it and without noticing it, yeah. I start extending the letter. You know, because in calligraphy you have a rules that you need to respect yeah. and you need to learn the rules from a master who learn from who learn from a master i didn't know that and, but this is great and, me, yeah. and then and then you can call yourself a calligrapher okay so people they come to me and say oh lc do you give a calligraphy workshop and i'm like i mean i cannot teach you calligraphy because yeah. i don't know any rules the calligraphy that i'm doing is kind of my style yeah. you know but i can teach you the way i scale my work i can teach you technique of how you use paint how you spray paint but yeah. i cannot teach Calligraphy, because I don't define myself as a calligrapher. Got it. You know, I think it's, uh, I look to this calligra uh, as calligraphy more as an abstract thing, you know. Uh, words, letters, script are kind of substance, you know, like abstract substance, and I just play with it. Nice. Before I get any further, um, on my show, I always ask my guests about a safe word. So if there's any questions potentially that I ask, um, and they don't want to answer, or they feel <laughs> uncomfortable answering, they usually give me a safe word. Is there a safe word that you have in mind? I would say drippings. Yeah. Dri drippings? Yeah, drippings. You know one of the drippings of the paint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know, but okay, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking of that. I don't yeah, know yeah. if I get this image of drippings. Very nice. So you learn Arabic when you're 18. Yeah. Arabic is, is a tough, tough, yeah. tough language to learn. I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out yeah. myself, to be honest with you, but that must have been easy. And then you decide to basically make a brand, a name for yourself out of Arabic. Yeah. Right? I mean, I didn't decide to make it. Honestly, back in the days, I did it because I... I wanted to. I loved it. And there was something so strong about calligraphy because the first time I saw a guy doing calligraphy in front of me was one of the teachers in the school where I was mm. taking class. Uh, it was night class in Paris. And I told him, please teach me. He's like, you know, I wanted to open a class in the school, but nobody's interested. Yeah. And I saw him like, you know, like he had the qalam. He was like doing this. I was like, wow, this is insane. And for me, that was like crazy. And, uh, and then I, I moved from France to, to the US. I, uh, I used to be a business consultant, you know, so I had a master's degree in, uh, in business. So I, Did you really? Interesting. Yeah. So I, I went to the U.S. to work and yeah. and uh, and then I was like dying there. 
Yeah. I remember going to work. I was like, what I'm doing here? What's the point of yeah. what's the point of all of this? Yeah. Okay, now I'm at this position, I'm gonna go to this position and and then at the end, what will yeah. it be? Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. I will be the head and yeah, <laughs> yeah. the big boss and for what? What's my purpose yeah. in life, you know, and how uh, helpful or useful I could be. So contextualize, how old are you at this point? I was twenty four. Okay. You know. So you started to have a look at what that life could look yeah, like yeah. and you yeah. were like this is probably not for me. Yeah, that was that was something not interesting. Yeah, you know, it was a kind of routine, and I hated this. And so I was like, I and work and st and school put me out of everything. I stopped painting and I stopped dancing. So I was like, really like a kind of old, you know, like suit guy. You know, like it was yeah. so boring. You know, yeah. and I felt it was not me. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, and yeah, and so I was like, I, and I met this guy. I, I left New York and I moved to Montreal, and I met this guy called uh, Est. H E S T is a French artist, and I remember he used to do. He used to write this graffiti name H E S T with Arabic shape, putting mm. two dot on top of the S on on top of the E. Yeah, and I'm like this is amazing. And then, and he said, like, look, Fauzi, uh, El Cid, come with me. Uh, come this weekend. So he was called you. Was he calling you El Cid? Were you known as uh, El Cid back then? No. Uh, in in the little world of breakdance, you know, like our videos were like I'm spinning and I yeah. I never noticed that, and I see like somebody's like, so yo El Cid. So they were but, calling you El Cid based on your dancing back then. Uh, I mean, you know, we all my friend in our neighborhood, we gave ourselves like a nickname. Yeah. You know, so some of my friends they used to rap, so they. Yeah, yeah. And so it was cool to have like a nickname, you know, like. We used to call that Le Nom de la Rue, you know, my street name. Okay. You know? Even if you didn't have any artistic practice. But yeah. me, as a, as graffiti, I took El Cid. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, dancing, like, I got this video where I see that and I never notice it. Yeah. When I look at it, I'm oh, like, wow. I'm spinning on my head and this guy's like screaming my name, El Cid. I'm like, wow. So that was funny that I used to use this name as well um, Very for dancing. And okay, uh, so you're in Montreal now, right? Yeah, Montreal. And you're, with, you're yeah. getting inspired. Yeah. And okay. this guy take me back yeah. on track. He's like, come paint with me. Yeah. And I'm like, look, uh, Est, I don't want to, I don't want to, to do graffiti like I used to do before. E L S W E D, like it's not interesting. Yeah, uh, I'm really into like, I mean, you motivated me like to go into Arabic calligraphy. Yeah, and so I remember I sketched like with a purple pen, purple like stabilo, you know, like the stabilo, like uh, yeah. the light uh, highlighter, yeah. Yeah. small calligraphy LC, and I went with him like into this. Uh, old factory, you know, yeah. so we used to do this, going to those old factory, we go and we painted them all. Wow. And uh, and I swear, like, this is such a weird thing. I felt like Spider-Man this day. Wow. You know, like when you discover, like, you have a power or yeah. something. Like, it's like, damn, how do I do this? Yeah. And it came so naturally. And then it became a routine every week, every weekend on Saturday or Sunday. I used to go take my spray paint and go and paint a wall. It was a kind of routine and a discipline. Yeah. No matter what happened, and then Montreal, you know, it's a cold. They have cold winter. Yeah, I've heard. So I remember, like one day it was minus fourteen, wow. and I went to paint, and the paint couldn't get out. Oh my god! You know, god. and yeah. my hand there were freezing, and I was screaming. It was, yeah. and I just got the chance to write on the snow minus fourteen, too cold to paint. You know, so, but um, it was really like discipline and and always creating stuff for myself, and there was no social media. Yeah. I used to have like a mailing list of yeah. 10 people, my friends. It's like, hey, look, guys, the last wall I painted. I was like, oh, amazing. And, you know, and that's it. And then yeah. Facebook came and you start sharing your picture and then people sharing your stuff. And then, and then I remember I was in Montreal and then I got this guy from Chicago who messaged me. He's like, oh, you know, we have this festival in June. We'd like to invite you. And I'm like, okay, so look, let me, I, I, re I remember I responded, let me check uh, the flight ticket and I get back to you. Yeah. And he's like, no, but we, I mean, we pay for your flight ticket. Yeah. I'm like, ah, okay, weird. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. And I'm like, can you just give me the address of the wall you want me to paint? So I would love to find a wall, like a hotel, not too far from it. So, yeah. you know, it would be easier for me to paint. And I was like, but I mean, we're paying for accommodation. I, the world accommodation. I How were you making money back then? Because I was not making money. Yeah. So for me, it was not even a question of, I got so that was the guy telling me I pay your flight ticket and a yeah, hotel, yeah. and then he said like tell us the list of paint you the paint the paint that you're gonna use that so you, we can purchase it. Yeah. So I'm like, there's somebody who's gonna fly me. Yeah. You're gonna put me in a hotel for four days, and I was still working you know, as a business consultant, so yeah. I took some day off. Okay. And you got pay the paint. So I was like, wow. So all so of a sudden you can start you start thinking I can make money from this. Not this even yet. Okay. I was right. not even thinking of this. Okay. For me, I was like, this is just amazing. I'm yeah. going. You know, like a guy is, is inviting me to paint somewhere, so it's so much. It's fun. Yeah. So I went and then I received, I think a few weeks later, 
some people in Toronto or some in, in Chicago, they're like, oh, okay, well, tell us, you know, like, please send us, you know, material and fees. What's your fee? I'm like, my fee? So you're going to pay me to paint now? So yeah. you're going to pay me to do something that I love? Yeah. So I was like, this is amazing. So I remember I, uh, the girl was called Shakira. I don't know if she's watching the show, but I will be. Wait, busy. wait, wait, wait. Shakira. Yeah, Shakira. Not the Shakira. No, not the Shakira. Okay. She was called Shakira. You, have you ever met the Shakira? No, not yet. Did anything? No, not yet. Okay. No, not so, yet. I mean, maybe. Oh, so day. maybe you give her. Yeah. Give her no, a but day. sometimes the funny thing, I meet really yeah. famous people, and and I don't know. So once okay. I was in the dinner with the Gigi Hadid beside me. Okay. I had no idea who okay. she was, okay. and I wrote her name. That's why I remember her. And yeah. then I saw her on TV, and I told my wife, I'm like. I know this woman. Yeah, yeah. Look from where? I was like, I don't know. At dinner with. Yeah, your wife was asking, "How do you know?" Yeah. So I was like, she was sitting beside me. Yeah. I I wonder how uncomfortable your wife was feeling at that point when she was (laughs) asking. No, I don't know. I think she was uncomfortable that I was sitting beside Chiji Hadid. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I had no idea who she was, and I think, and I remember her just because of her name, because somebody asked me to write her name on the on the menu of the dinner. Yeah. And she's like, "Oh, can you write my name?" And I was like, "Yes." You must get it all the time. I mean, you carry a pen, right? You always carry a pen with you. Have you ever had any crazy stories with someone? You know, you know, you signing your name for someone or something along those lines. Uh, yeah, there's this story with uh, Mbappé in Paris. Okay, <laughs> okay. So I was I was invited by the uh, the Fondation du Paris Saint Germain uh, for a dinner there, and um, at the end of the dinner, you know, I go see Mbappé to take a picture, and yeah. then there's somebody that take a picture and ask him to sign something, and uh, and there was no pen, and so me, I had my pen, you know, in my pants, so I give it to him. Can I can I see the pen? Yeah. Yeah. So you always carry this around, yeah, exactly. no matter what, just in case you want to draw yeah. something. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. Always. So, I love it. So I give him, you know, and I hand it this part, you know, because this one is the one that I use. Yeah. And this one, I tell my kids, okay. you're allowed to use this, but you cannot use this. So okay. they're always like, Baba, they look the same too. I'm so sorry. No, this they... one is like, uh, you know, like this. Yeah, yeah. And this one is like more for the calligraphy work. Yeah. You know, okay. So you... Got it. Okay. And, um, and so uh, I give it to Mbappé and so he signed and then, you know, he get, you know, like other people. Yeah. Other people. And then. He keep the pen. He took your pen. So he took my pen. So Mbappe, if you're watching this show, Killian, like, uh, come on, give come me on. My pen I think back, you can man. get your own yeah. pen. <laughs> um, okay, so go. Okay, so going back. So you, they fly. They fly you out, right? Yeah. Was it first class, business class? No, uh, no, it was the economy. I okay, mean, I well, didn't even. But care you didn't care back then. Yeah, just, that how how time changed. Okay, so you fly out, and and that you're getting paid effectively to yeah. to, to do this. Yeah. So was that the start where you started to think this could start becoming yeah, a career change? Exactly. So I th- I see that. And you're 24 at this time, you said? Uh, was 2010 now. Okay. So, yeah. okay. so I was a bit older. Okay, you know. quick math sometimes. Yeah. Like okay. You're in so, your late 20s. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, that's becoming interesting, you know. Yeah. And uh, and I see people asking me stuff and I'm getting more like requests like that. And so for me it was just, wow, this is something that I can really do. And then I keep going like that. And um, and we're in 2010, and then my daughter Maya, she's about to enter the world. Okay, so you're married by then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So she's about to enter the world, and so she's born. She was supposed to be born on November 5, 2010, and she actually she's born on November 6 in the morning. Okay. So on the fourth, I go see my my uh, my boss Jean-Yves Popovich that I that I salute, and I tell him, okay, this is uh, you know I tell him this is my last day. So I quit my job my the, day, the day before the birth of my That's daughter. That's great. So you're, you're making dramatic life decisions. Yeah. And, and I mean, the uncertainty that you'd have, I mean, quitting a job is one thing. Yeah. Having a baby is something else. Yeah. Doing them in, in the same week. But that's just the best decision, I think. Yeah, you know, it Because did. I felt I would be 100% focused on my baby and 100% focused on my work at the same time. Okay. I think... Nine to five. As a consultant, you don't do nine to five. You, d- you never five. felt like this was a big risk, a big gamble, financially to take care of a young baby? Uh, no. You know, I say like, baby, come with the risk. You know, so I was a really, I deeply believe in this. And I didn't just make the jump like that. Yeah. It's not like I was starting painting and then I quit. So I see like stuff coming and people getting interested in my work and I could plan as well. And also I was in Canada at this time and you have like the per- uh, paternal leave of mm. six months or for six months you yeah. can still have like part of your salary yeah so i was like look either i'm gonna do it now either yeah. i will never do it yeah and so it was a leap of faith and i remember everybody was like you're crazy my dad's like oh you went to school and you did this and like you're giving up everything for what and I'm like, guys just trust me and uh and i remember a friend of a good friend of mine he told the he told my mom he said like look uh, How's he but when he take you're decision, you're crazy. You're yeah, a yeah, bit you crazy. Know? Yeah. So then when he take decision, like he knows what he's taking. That. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I, I, I jump deep of faith, and I was like 100% with Maya, my daughter, and 
percent with my job. Like it's amazing. Work. I'm just saying there are a lot of people who who probably have always dreamed about doing what they really really want to do, but they're worried, especially when they have kids potentially, yeah. that they feel they cannot have the financial means to take care of themselves. Yeah. But what would be your message to people like that who are going through? They want to make a life change. They yeah. know it's the right thing to do, but they are worried about the financial. Um, you know, financial there is, application. There's uncertainty everywhere. Nobody knew about COVID. You know, it, like five years ago, would you say like in 2020, everybody will be stuck and maybe you have like a security job and you will be fired like from, like like doing this, like, like straight on the spot. Nobody mm. would know that. But what I'm saying to people is, you have a brain, you have like skills. So you're in a position today and I think if you're like competent and you have like, you know, you really know what you're doing. Mm. If you quit your job just to try what you believe in, yeah. I'm sure you can come back after one year. Yeah. It's not you coming after 10 years and like your field is totally So totally it's the what's the worst can happen type of approach. The worst can happen is like you're just going to come back to case, yeah. case zero. Yeah. Like so this is what you're telling yourself yes. when you're making these decisions. Okay. Exactly. Okay. You know, and you never know if, you know, like me, thank God I'm blessed and it's such a privilege that I'm able to do this. But sometimes you question yourself like, and if this stopped tomorrow, what would you do? Yeah. And so you keep working to be like, okay, I'm going to renew myself. I'm going to work. And, and it's not easy. Yeah. You know, people see like social media. Oh, yeah, let's see this there. Oh, he's, he's traveling to this place. He's doing this, this and this. He's a collector. He's supported by people. Like They have no idea. This is if you quit your job to focus on something that you love, it doesn't become a, a job anymore, you know? Yeah. So you have to be dedicated. Like this is, I mean, you know, I don't take holiday. Yeah. I don't take holiday. So I go on holiday yeah. with my family, but I never say like, oh, look, I'm... Yeah. For your, me, mind, your mind is yeah, always my mind working, is working, you're always yeah. seeing inspiration. I cannot, you know, like the weird thing, the first time I think I went on holiday, I uh, once went with my wife to the Maldives and we reached, you know, like we're on the beach like that and we're sitting on the on the bench and, and I'm like, and what? What do we do now? Yeah. Like, and now she's like, just chill. I yeah. say, what do you mean, chill? And I don't have this thing. I'm, I'm constantly, you know, like thinking of the next thing and what I'm gonna do next, yeah. where I'm gonna go, yeah. and uh, and it's important for me to feed myself, you know, because yeah. uh, as an artist, you always have to be like inspired, you know, yeah. and 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 do do stuff and discover new stuff. So, so you know what my next cliche question is gonna yeah, be? Yeah, tell me. What inspires you? I mean, uh, and think about that because I mean, it's 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 not an easy question to answer. I mean, but Luca, it you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not an easy question, but I think, as you say, maybe it's a cliche question because you never know like where inspiration is coming mm. from. You read the book and then, you know, f it's how you connect things, you know, how you're going to connect one event with an object and create something that, you know, link them and that any person wouldn't think about, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's when it becomes art and it's like, oh, wow, that's such a cool idea. Can anything you know? be art? It depends on the, you know, of the statement that you put in it. You know, I think it's the purpose behind it, you know, and that's why for me, anything can become art if really you have a statement behind it. Yeah, I mean, you had a, like one of your most famous pieces of work you did was, was in Egypt. Yeah. Um, a lot of people know it was it, it, was, uh, it was over 50 buildings you, yeah. you drew as an incredible, incredible piece of art. Talk to me a little bit about by, behind the inspiration behind that. Um, and also, is that the type of thing you want to be, you know, known for? You know, or are you are you looking for a different type of, let's say, positioning within the art world? You know, I mean, that's really like a kind of marketing question, you know, uh, <laughs> positioning and stuff. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to be known for something in particular uh, visually. It's more like for the uh, the statement, why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And I think in everything, all the projects that I do, what I love the most is the human experience. You know, when you go to a place, you don't know anybody. You reach a place where people, they tell you, oh, be careful, don't go there. And then you go there, and then you start meeting the people. You know, and not the first day, but that's a relation that you build. Yeah. And, and then people, they become friends, they become family. And then after, for example, Egypt was eight years ago. Today, I'm still in touch with them. Yeah, no. I'm invited to their wedding as I'm part of their family. And this is garbage city. You know, and people usually, they... They tell me like, oh no, we don't go there. Like so the this is the place like that collects, to be clear, it collects yeah. garbage for yeah, the city. For Cairo, yeah. Right, and they Cairo. bring it to the neighborhood yeah. and they have dev developed the most powerful recycling system in the world. Yeah. And then nobody can do what they've, they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, this is just amazing. And they don't call themselves the garbage collector. They say, we're the cleaners. Yeah. They say, because without us, yeah. all Cairo so will be... So you're changing uh, perceptions. Yeah. They're known exactly. for something. You're trying to shed 
a light, a new light on something through yeah. an artistic lens yeah. to change perception. Of people, but actually most of the time the impact is on me. Yeah. Because me, I go to this place with so much stereotype. And you go back to when you were younger, thinking about are you French or are you Tunisian? Yeah. And wanting to belong. Yeah. And that sense of we want to create that an identity for you. Does mm. this help fulfill some of those sort of, you know, earlier Def insecurities yeah. that you might have had? Definitely. You know, definitely, because I think you, you know, our, our identity is made of those different layers, you know, and uh, and depending on where you are at what time of your life, you're more something than the other one. You yeah. Know? And, um, and yeah, doing this, I think for me, like the human experience define my identity, you know, define yeah. me as a person. Yeah. You know, I love to meet people. Yeah. You know, I love to speak with people. I love to learn, you know, like uh, I love to take, for example, when I'm in Dubai, I love to take the taxi, yeah. you know, and... Uh, yeah. And I speak with you know, like you know, I speak with the driver and and I ask them how do you say that in your language and I write them down you know on my yeah. phone yeah. and then I try to learn it so I I don't like people sometimes when they look yeah. at me they think I speak like but you're, you're 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 a student of the world you're a student of life because yeah. I'm guessing everything could potentially you could use later on either to exactly. express or yeah. as a form of yeah. uh, of identity and for that's you the are. part of the inspiration by speaking yeah. with people they will yeah. tell you stories about themselves and then you'll be like oh wow actually this is for example, I learned recently from this Pakistani driver that they used to send themselves, you know, back in the days, like 20 years ago, he used to send his family and his family used to send him like recorded tape. Mm. You know, see the WhatsApp voice yeah, note, like yeah. when you complain, oh, this guy sent me like a three minute voice note and yeah. you put like, uh, you know, mm, uh, cross yeah. two, you know, like. Yeah, type so speed, yeah, yeah, speeds yeah. up. Exactly. And he said like, we used to record like tape. Yeah, look, today I'm doing this, no, 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 like for over like a few weeks, you know, and Oh yeah, today the day was really uh, yeah. tiring. Uh, I'm yeah. so upset. Since something happened, and then put it in a in an envelope and they send it and to their country. It. It's crazy. And then you know they. And receive. I bet you it's the happiest day of that person who's receiving it when they receive it's that. Amazing. It's like it's amazing. Um, so so what have you learned? You've said you've learned about the world, a lot about people. What have you learned most about yourself? Uh, that I'm all over the place. <laughs> I think yeah, I I learned that I really need to. Uh, I think over the years I really need to focus. A lot, you know, because uh, I, um, you know, like kids when they're like, they start something and then they go do something else and then they come back to the thing and then they start something else. And I think sometimes I'm like, I like to experiment, you know what I mean? And uh, I love to do a lot of stuff. Sometimes sometime I'm impatient and I sit, so I start a lot of things at the same time. Yeah. But now I'm like more into that. Let's go slowly. I won't. Okay. I will finish this and then start this. And has your personal life, your wife, your family, have they played a role in that and helping you? Uh, I would say yes, you know, and also my team, you know, the people who work with me, you know, like uh, I think my team around me like are kind of uh, are like a shield, you know, yeah. for whatever is around me that yeah. is not good. It's like a you protective know? bubble. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love to say that uh, I love to say like, you know, like the team is the Avenger, you know, like one is... Uh, one is Hulk. Which, which, which one are you? I'm very curious. I mean, Hulk is, uh, it will be Wahid from my team. He comes okay. and he beats people. And okay. you have Isabel, who uh, is more like a kind of uh, Captain America. She has the shield, you know, she's protecting yeah. me. Nice. You know, so I see I, I see the team like that and everybody has its own role. And, and I think for me at the beginning, because I started this journey really by myself, you know, and I started building a team of people and growing, you know. So now we have two studios, one in Tunisia and uh, one space in Dubai. Um, but you've always had LC. You've always had a group of people around you from an early age when you were painting on the walls in Paris. You had a group of friends. You had people you were freestyle dancing with. Yeah. This has been something that you've you've naturally surrounded yourself with people that potentially are similar to you or have helped you form a sort of that protective bubble. So, so I, when you say that, yeah, I, I I noticed that, and a friend of mine told me like, you don't like to be alone yeah. or by yourself. But I think by growing up, I enjoy not having you know I enjoy yeah. my time alone. Yeah. You know, uh, really chilling by myself, yeah. you know, sitting, reading a book uh, alone. But uh, I think, yes, it was this um, notion of, I don't want to say that in, in English, click. You know, yeah. like you're click. Yeah, yeah in <laughs> click. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. So you have like your, yeah, your, yeah. your gang people, you know. and, uh, yeah. and People you, like you, people yeah. who think like you, act like you, they but, act, you know, they kind of yeah. work with you. Yeah. But growing up, I think now, like, I, I try to avoid that. Yeah. I still have like my friends, you know, like the core of my friend, and which is, but I love to meet people uh, who think yeah. totally different from me. How you proud know? are you to be Arab? I don't know. You know, like, what did I do to be Arab? You know, that's... Uh, so I always ask my question when people are like, oh, I'm so proud to be this, you know. I didn't choose 
you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. I'm product of history, you yeah, know. So if my dad maybe married a Japanese woman, so maybe I will be <laughs> yeah. half Arab, half Japanese. Yeah. But it's not, I think, the pride of being Arab is um, is really looking into like this culture and uh, and really realizing how deep it is. You know what I mean? And how beautiful it is. And there's so much depth and so much diversity in it that that I love. You know, you can learn from people in Morocco and and they will do something totally different in Lebanon. So it's, it's your work, in a way, do you try and celebrate the Arab culture? Do you see it as a way of shining the light for the, for the Western world or the, you know, the Eastern world to sort of look at the, this Middle East as a region, as a region of creativity, as a region, region of art? Is there something yeah. that is, is matters to you or are you much more thinking, you know what, let the politics, let the regional handle itself. I just want to, you know, do great work and inspire you know, people. For me, what is important in my work is with Arabic calligraphy or like something linked to this part of the world, is to capture universality. You know, that's how I look at it. I'm not trying to do uh, art for Arab, you know, and when I checked, I have created more piece of art out of the Arab world than in wow. the Arab world. You know, I have like a piece that's still hanging yeah. between North and South Korea, you know, yeah. on the border. Oh, wow. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, I hope one day, you know, uh, I hope one day they will just become like one country and they will destroy the yeah. piece and I would be like, that would be yeah. amazing. Yeah. But, you know, like uh, celebrating this universality yeah. and showing to the world that, you know, we're not like, I would say different than other people, you know, and sometimes, you know, like if you look at the news and stuff, there is always this propaganda about this part of the world, but uh, capturing our universality, celebrating it, celebrating it and, and highlighting sometimes this part of the world. Why have a studio in Tunisia? Yeah. A lot of people say like, no, don't come here. Like, uh, this is so complicated, administratively it's complicated, and uh, we don't have the resources. And I'm like, man, there's so much talent there and in the world of Arab world and in Africa in general, because I'm African as well, you know what I mean? And people tend to forget that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. So, so you mentioned the amount of, really interesting that you said about the, the amount of art that you've created. Mm -hmm. There's more outside the region. Than there yeah. is. In total, ballpark number. Actually, How never, many pieces of art have you done? I never counted, honestly. Yeah. Are we talking thousands? Are we talking yeah, yeah. tens of thousands? No, I would, I would say hundreds. I mean, hundreds of thousands. No, 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 hundreds. I oh, mean, okay, less than. Okay, I mean, okay. of course, more than thousand if you yeah. count uh, canvases and stuff. But yeah. painting on walls, yeah, of course, okay. like nice. There is, uh, I mean, yeah. Very you good. know, like every place I go, I shouldn't say this, but uh, if. You uh, paint someone. Yeah, I always paint. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, Don't yeah. paint in my house. My wife <laughs> will kill you. Uh, all right, part of my show, I um, I do a bit of improv. So okay. I have a, a set of questions that are okay. in a bag, and okay. the bag that happens to be next to me. Okay. So I'm going to pass you over the bag. You haven't okay. seen what's in it, right? You have no idea okay. what type yeah. of questions yeah. there are. So read them out, and yeah. we'll talk about it. Yeah? Sure. All right. Okay. Thank you. Da -da -da -da. Okay. See what we have. So we, we're probably not going to do all of them, but okay. we'll just do it. We'll do a few so of them. Arabic calligraphy, Arabic calligraphy, limiting or without boundary. Yeah, so Arabic calligraphy, mm -hmm. is it a limiting, uh, is it a limiting positioning, I hate to go back to it, or is it without boundary? Do you yeah. want to be labeled as being? No, I mean, that's what I mentioned earlier. Yeah. I, I don't want to be labeled with anything. You know, yeah. if you come to my studio today, you will see piece where there is no Arabic calligraphy. Yeah. And uh, it was a medium that I loved and I still love. And, uh, but I don't want to limit myself. Tomorrow, yeah. if I just want to draw flowers, yeah. um, maybe I'm going to draw Or pick flowers. olives. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, or maybe I'm just going to open a restaurant and stop yeah. painting. So this has been, this has been with you from your early, early life, where yeah. you said you don't like to be pigeonholed. You don't yeah. like to open a box. So where does that come from, Elsie? Why, is there something that you don't feel comfortable, someone telling you what you are and what you're not? Is that, is that where it, I mean, what, what, where does that come from? If you can help me understand. I, I think, you know, growing up in France from immigrant parents, you know, my dad, came in 68 to Paris. He, uh, he worked at uh, Renault's factory, you know, for 40 years. And so you feel the way sometimes in school or society make you feel like you're limited in what you can do, you know? And, and I remember like, for example, my master's degree in France, I did it in one of the best business school, not because I wanted to go to the business school, but just because people told me, no, you, a friend of mine told me like, no, we cannot go to this kind of school. Yeah, he was a, a, a friend of mine from you know from Benin, West Africa, and I said, Jibril, why you applied to? You didn't apply to Essex or HEC. Yeah, he's like, no, but people like us, they, they don't go there. Did your dad put pressure on you when no. you were younger uh, on to what? go to to go to business school? No, no, no. My career. dad, the, the only thing he told us is like work in school. I mean, if 
you grew up and you're working in a factory, then I'm going to beat you. Okay. You know, you know, so okay. that's the only thing. He, so wanted, he wanted a better wanted, life. He wanted yeah, he wanted us to step up. You know yeah. what I mean? He arrived in France. He didn't know how to, know to read and write. And he, he learned from the, the, the nuns, les, les bonnes sœurs. Mm. You know? So he learned from them. Uh, and then, and I remember like, um, I remember my, my older brother, Tofiq, he was seven years old, second grade. Yeah. And he had like my dad, so he was, you know, standing beside us, you know, to see what we're doing, our homework. And he didn't know how to write the word chewing gum. And uh, he's like, so why are you bugging? Why are you not writing? He's like, I don't know how to write it. Mm. He's like, but how do you, how can you know? He's like, yeah, but yeah. in class we have a dictionary. Yeah. He's like, what is it? And he's like, okay. And he, I remember he went, he went to shop in downtown, like we used to live in, like in the suburb of Paris. And he bought our first dictionary. Wow. So back in the days, I always used to say that if you were like a guy selling books, you know, back in the days, people, they knock at your door so selling you yeah. like this encyclopedia. Yeah, we yeah. used to have like this, um, this uh, thing, like uh, this writer, writer digest, reader yeah, digest. Reader, reader's digest. It was yeah. in English. I yeah. don't even know. Nobody was reading English. <laughs> we used to have that in our house. So you bought these books. <laughs> my dad, my dad, he signed the thing. So every month we used to receive this. Uh, Amazing. So, Very nice. so, so there was no pressure, but it was more like uh, the fact that you feel limited people they tell you no you cannot do this yeah and that this you hated that that's yeah. what drives you right you, so yeah you're not allowed to do this yeah. this is not for you and even for me like i remember like people say like ah, but there's so there's this. an inherently sorry to cut you off but there's there's an inherent rebellious side to you because the minute when someone tries to tell you to do, do something people's reaction is oh, okay there's probably a reason or you know what i'm not going to listen to you i want to yeah. do what i want so there's an inherent rebellious side yeah. to your to your nature where do yeah. you get that from do you think i don't know maybe i'm a i'm a leo I'm a lion. I yeah, don't know. I have no idea. Very nice. Let's try. Know. Let's try another question. Do you want to okay. put the ball on the table? Okay, sure. And um, yeah, let's just read another one. Let's try to do the, uh, yeah, the you can do it. You know, like a yeah. like see. a lottery, huh? Okay, you work improvise or deliberate. So when you when you are when you approach a canvas, do you know what the work, the piece of art, is going to look like at the end, or do you see how it's going and then change it accordingly? I think I see it in my head. I can see it in my head, so I project it. So even like the big work that I do, except Egypt because I needed to match the stuff, yeah, yeah. I don't sketch it. So I know exactly, I really can project it in my head from the beginning. Okay. You know, some work sometimes were more complex, no, not more complex, but uh, were different in a certain way. I have to sketch them. Yeah. But most of the time it's like... So really you know where it's going when you're starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But have I, you ever done anything where you started? Well, actually, I've got another idea and I'm going to adapt, I'm going to amend, I'm going to change. I mean, yeah, a lot. Okay. A lot, for example... Uh, um, Egypt, for example, was supposed to be smaller. Yeah, you know, I didn't do fifty-two buildings. So yeah, purpose. how many? How many did you have in mind? It was like I think thirty at the beginning, and then okay. I just extend my Photoshop. I just yeah. did like uh, f like one centimeter extension on Photoshop, and then yeah. he okay. just took yeah. the whole neighborhood. Yeah. And then I was like, wow, like this one centimeter, like at one hundred meters of of building behind. Yeah, but is like I call that the beautiful mistake. You yeah. know, for example, there is a wall in Dubai that I painted. Uh, on the green planet, okay, the city yes. walk. and the wall is not straight. It's like a kind of like that four, like four yeah. triangle that make a big square, yeah. and the wall are coming inside. And so the wall is white. I wanted to do a kind of ton sur ton piece, and I, I had sorry, what does that mean? ton sur ton, uh, like uh, uh, green on green or gray okay. on gray. Okay. So so the ton sur ton I wanted to do like sounds so cool. Ton sur ton. Ton sur ton. Yeah. Ton sur ton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to do like a, a, a gray. So I had yeah. a dark gray and a light gray. So I yeah. start the light gray, it's too light. Yeah. Then I start the dark gray. I use the dark gray and it's like, this is too dark. Yeah. And then I had the silver paint with me. Oh, wow. So I start silver, I start painting. And then the next day I come, I'm driving on this parking of City Walk and I see the, the paint is not there. One day of work, the paint is not there. And I'm like, oh, they erase my work at night. And actually not. It was the sun beating on us that make it yeah. totally white because wow. it was metallic paint. Yeah. So the more I was getting closer, I could see it. Yeah. Your art changes based on geography, yeah. based on lighting. Yeah. So even like, even the piece in, in Egypt, in Cairo, mm. you can only see it well from yeah. a certain One angle, point, yeah. right? So yeah. from any other angle... It looks like a, an yeah. egg. So, which is so beautiful. So yeah. there's a uniqueness and a, it's that kind of... You, you miss it, you miss that moment, you miss the art. Exactly. Right? So that's, that, there's a really nice uniqueness in that. I like the, word, the fact that you use the word moments because I... I think my, I, I always say like I'm a, I'm a collector of moments, mm. you know. So I, I collect those little, you know, little, you know, event and moment that I share with the. So people. best moment of your life so far? Wow, best. I think you know, uh, 
you know, like if I say, oh, the birth of my daughter, like my three son, they will be like, ah, oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's not, no, I think. Well, first thing that came to your mind is usually the right one. I think there's a beautiful moment. I, I, I don't know, like it's, it's difficult. There's so many stuff like stories, for example, uh, uh, this woman that I met, uh, she was an Afghani refugee in Lesbos in Greece. Random, uh, I'm doing a project there. And then people tell me, yeah, you should meet this Afghani woman. She's uh, called Bibi Zahra. And, uh, and so I'm like, okay. So I go, she has like her little, you know, tent, a house, mm. a, like a mobile home, you know, mm. in the camp. And then, you know, she's drawing flowers. You know, and she explained us that she, since she left Afghanistan with her family, she's been painting as a kind of re trying to remember the flower of her garden. And then I'm like, okay, Bibi Zahra, do you like to, let's do a collab together. We paint a wall together. So imagine I'm here like with this 75 years old woman. Wow. So she traced, she took a pen and she drew like her flower. And then I fill up with spray paint and it's like, what do you want me to do as a calligraphy? And she said like, can you write the word Amid Behi Zandagi, which means in Farsi, hope for life. So I paint this. And then we stay in touch with her son called uh, Nur Muhammad. And, and then two weeks or three weeks later, they say, okay, I found you know, we, my mom uh, got her paper for, uh, for Germany. So she can go join my brother. So she got her passport, you know, as a refugee to go live in Germany. And, uh, and so then we print a lithograph, like a kind of print of our collaboration and then take a flight and I, with the print and we go meet her like in her house in Dusseldorf, you know. And, and for me, that was just crazy because, you know, it was this moment we spent two hours together painting yeah. and, and up to today, like she just called me two days ago and we don't, I don't speak Farsi. She leave me a long voice note <laughs> in Farsi and, you know, like open my phone sometimes on FaceTime and, you know, and we speak and yeah. we just laugh and, yeah. and that's it. Beautiful. And that's, I think that's power. I, this is so powerful. Right. And, it is. Absolutely. And I have like many of those stories that, you know, actually I'm compiling right now into a book that will launch maybe this year. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice story. Let's try another ball. Okay. okay. More important. Final aesthetic, a deeper message. So what's more important to you? How the piece of art looks at the very, very end mm -hmm. or the, the meaning, the deeper meaning that sits behind it? I think it's, uh, it's the balance. It has to be totally balanced. Don't sit on the fence. Come on. Okay. I'll Look, see it. Come I'm, on. Okay, I will tell yeah. you. The message, the statement yeah. has to be the strongest. Okay. But you have, um, I mean, the aesthetic has yeah. to be at the level of the message. You know what I mean? You see what I mean? So You're sitting on the fence. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because imagine you, you have such a deep message. I'm with you. I'm and with then you. the artwork is just... Yeah, average. Yeah, it's weird. Bones you know, because you won't, you know, like, you, yeah. you, you know, it's... Uh, can you have a beautiful piece of work without the message? You can, right? Yeah, you it's can. Yeah. Can, you have, can you have the other way around? Can you have a beautiful message without the nice look? You can as well, I guess. Then it's relative. But it's not you know, as aesthetically, you know, aesthetically, you, some people will judge like, no, it's not beautiful. Okay. So, what's the most beautiful piece of art that you've done? What are you most proud of aesthetically that you've contributed? What's your favorite oh, piece? Sorry, you're asking me so much difficult question. You know, because they're yeah, actually because each one is linked to. For example, what I did with Bibi Zahra is beautiful, but it's not my coolest piece of art. You know, it was just a black calligraphy with flowers. I love it. Yeah. Egypt is crazy technically in terms of challenge, but I mean, the depth of the project is, I mean, everything that happened is crazy. A small world that I did in Bangladesh like a few months ago, yeah. just because of the vibe, it was like this tiny street with so many tuk-tuk passing. Yeah. I created a huge traffic <laughs> because people were stopping to see me painting. It yeah. took me like 20 minutes or 30 minutes to paint the wall. But these little moments, you know, that yeah. so it's it's really difficult for me to say, okay, I love this one better than the other one. I think there's some worlds where there's no story behind it, not no story, but where there's no people coming or, and and yeah. no people interested to come and check. Yeah. So I like to paint in the street just for this. I was very intimidated with you coming to my house uh, today about the art that we have. <laughs> and, and so I was like, I was telling my wife, let's hide everything no. just in case, in case he starts looking at it. Not so good, not so good. So look, I think, I think you know, the aesthetics are super important yeah. and you have, you have unbelievable talent, right? What, you. what you, what you've done. Um, and I know it, I know it's not always easy to, to think about what is your best piece. Let me ask it another way. Um, what would you like to be remembered for? Um, I think I love this phrase from this, uh, Bedouin that I met in Tunisia. 
11 years ago. Uh, his name was Slah Suwai Marzugi. He said, in Arabic, somebody who didn't leave a trace, didn't have a life. And I think, uh, I think I'm, I'm trying to, uh, yeah, if, I, if I'm able just to change the perception of one person on one subject, I think that if I'm remembered for this, that will be perfect. Amazing. Yeah. Let's, do, let's do one more. Let's do one more. You like you like it you like, like the, the bag. There's yeah? four of them, so okay. Well, okay, maybe we'll do two. I think we'll do two, but we need we need yeah. Okay. We'll do two. We'll because do two. I picked the one like that was the label. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this one is common misconception on what you stand for. Okay, so what is the what is the biggest or most common misconception about what you stand for? I mean, it's so much shortcut such as uh, um, Arabic calligraphy, Islam, Quran, Islamist. You know, and yeah. whatever. So, and so it's it's funny because uh, uh, I had a show in Paris. Uh, it was a group show, a kind of retrospective of uh, of graffiti in Paris. And so they asked me to be part of the show, and and I was there. And uh, I did my piece during the summer 2022. And I don't go for the opening, but I I go later on with my kids, and we visit the show. I told my 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 kids, look, this guy is, was one of my inspiration. You know, it was a full yeah. history. You know. And then I reached my piece, super happy, you know, uh, and then and I read the statement. And I see that El Cid write a uh, verse from Quran, you know, I'm like, where did you see that in my biography? Why, you know, and, and I felt it was this kind of sensational thing that you wanted to, you know, like you put me in this box. I used Quran in one, in one piece, which is um, a mosque in 2012 in my hometown of Gabes in south of Tunisia which it was a 57 meter minaret that they never painted. So me every summer, you know, I used to go, I see this building, I was like, damn, this is crazy. You know, like you look at it, it's insane. That's the tallest minaret. I don't know why they did this. And, uh, and so 2012, I, a friend of mine is like, Fauzi, why don't you do the, uh, why don't you do the minaret? So we go see the imam of the mosque and <laughs> the guy is like, alhamdulillah, jitu. Like, thank God you came. And I'm like, he didn't ask me anything. What mm. you're going to write? What you're going to paint? Yeah. I could have painted a blue elephant on the masjid, you know, maybe yeah. you would have said, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. And, uh, and that's it, you know. And, and then even in this thing, you know, I, I use Quran, but I, I try to use the verse that was really universal that says, oh, you mankind who have created you from a male and a female and made you uh, people and tribes so you may know each other. So it's always how can you capture the universality of the thing? Yeah. But... Um, of course, I'm I'm facing so much miscon misconception and and it's fine. But what is interesting also is the fact that most of my collectors are not Arab. Mm. Most of my collectors from the from the US, yeah. from Italy. And does that know. misconception going back to what I was saying earlier? Does that help fuel you when people say, "Oh, he stands for this"? Do you then want to say, "Actually, no, I stand for some"? Does that help you become more creative in other ways, more unique ways? Uh, I never try to be a response to an attack. You know okay. what I mean? So uh, even when something like you know. An, something happened, you know, most of the time it's like, oh, you Arab people, oh, you Muslim people, what do you have say to say about this? Mm. I'm like, why my work has to be a response to yep. your assumption? Yep. You know, like, I have a statement, I believe in something, and I want to create something as, uh, as an affirmation, yep. not as a response, you know, I'm not yep. coming and telling you, oh, or justify myself, yep. you know. Got it. Let's do one more. Calligraphy or graffiti? Uh, oh. So the, this is the, the ultimate stereotype, yeah. right? So, uh, you know, we had a bit of a chat off off camera. Um, you know, what to introduce you as? You know, are you are you? Like, there was someone that, that put them together. Yeah, yeah. What's that term? Calligra yeah, calligraphy. Calligraphy. Yeah, yeah. yeah Arabi, calligraphy, French, Tunisian. I mean, yeah. it was so long. So, ago. what is the answer? Is it calligraphy? Is it graffiti? Is it neither? What is? I mean, I mean so what? Do, what on the record? What do you want to be? You know, how do you want to come across? It started with both started with graffiti then yeah. calligraphy came into it and uh and i love hassan masoudi the iraqi artist who say like calligraphy and graffiti are sister from the same mother you know and because when you do graffiti you beautifying the script in english or whatever language that you're doing and calligraphy is the same you know but i think i'm going deeper than this or yeah. like uh, i s i i know my roots you know i know like i started to do something and i love to s Paint on walls. Honestly, yeah. this is one of the coolest things. And and you know when you have kids, one yeah. 
you're the coolest dad. Yeah, my daddy painted on walls. Or you know, my yeah. kids are like, yeah, yeah, we painted the wall with my dad there. You know what I mean? Just imagine the conversation with you and your wife, like when when the kids are born and you want to paint the room. She what? She has her own idea about what to do in the room. <laughs> I can just imagine that conversation that you're yeah. having with her. No, no, no. no. I'll take care of the room. I'll take care of the walls. <laughs> but I, I paint, actually, I paint their, I paint their names, you know, on the streets. So, for example, uh, my daughter, she has a, a wall in Kuwait. My son, Hamza, has a wall in, uh, in Tunisia. So, like, he's, um, my daughter, she never go to Kuwait. But mm. and the two one, I'm just trying to find the, the new spot. Look, I've got a couple of walls upstairs. <laughs> if, if you're interested. Um, okay, so what's next for you, Alcide? What's what does the future look like for you? Um, Hopefully bright, you know, uh, a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of project. Trying yeah. to really uh, um, reinvent myself right now. So I'm reworking on new stuff, yeah. uh, new project. Uh, I'm working actually on a kind of crazy thing that hopefully I've been thinking for years. And now, like, I yeah. think 2024, hopefully it's the year where I'm going to do it. Yeah. And uh, and I love this. I love, you know, like, uh, you know, when you s think of something that it's, imp it's impossible. And then when it's happened, you're like, damn. Yeah. did it you know yeah. so yeah hopefully i i hope I, I like the word reinvent as well because yeah. again it goes back to your roots about your you know you, you or you don't want to be put in a box you yeah. want to keep being you want to keep freshening things up you yeah. want to keep it real you want to keep doing what's right for yeah. you um and you like change i mean whether you're freestyling you know or whether you're chopping onions or yeah. whether you're picking <laughs> olives or yeah. whether you're you know building fantastic uh, murals in, in in egypt you you've always looked at trying to do different things and not to be put in a certain position or in a certain box yeah. i think that's an admirable and i think if you want to continue doing that it's a it's a real inspiration for a lot of people it is it never, is never settle keep yeah, i mean keep the thing is don't you know like uh I've one of my assistants she she told me but oh uh, no you made it like we had this conversation three days ago she was like but you made it I'm like what do you mean i made it it's like no but you see like people they love your work you travel you do so much stuff it's crazy I'm like no 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 you don't understand like that's when you think that you made it that actually this is the start of the fall. And I'm like, actually everything that we have done, and I say we because I have a team of people, you know, and I cannot take the credit for everything that's happening without the help of everybody that, you know, they don't see they're yeah. not here, they're not on the back. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But it's everything that has been done bring me to where I am today and it allows me to say like, this will be the next step. Like, you're very yeah. humble. Your whole, I mean, your whole story that you talked me through is those people who's helped you out throughout your career and you, you've even named them. So they've obviously played such an important part yeah. of your development. So I know how important other people are in your life. And um, look, I, I think it's been a real privilege to, to get to know who you really are a, a, as a person. I, I wish you nothing but the very best in everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd love to taste some of your cooking the next time <laughs> I'm in Tunisia. Um, but um, wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much. And uh, we'll speak soon. Yeah.